Good morning, I'm Tamara Shoemaker. When I waded into 1 Corinthians, I knew there would be some difficult passages to think and to pray through. <laughs> but gracious, even knowing that, I think that um, I bit off a bigger piece than I really anticipated. So with that, I just pray that the Holy Spirit speaks through me today, speaks through my inadequacies, and um, shows off the all-surpassing power that is inside this leaky vessel. And that's what I, what I called my blog. Um, it's called that for a reason. I am a leaky vessel with many flaws and many faults, and I pray that the Holy Spirit speaks through those flaws and fault lines and pours into your life through listening through this to this. Okay, moving on. Last evening, <clears throat> I had an illuminating conversation with a friend. We were discussing identity, which seems to be, you know, quite a timely topic that has hit the national conversation and has remained in the national conversation. And this isn't a topic that's only floating around in church circles, right? It shows up everywhere and it's an important one to sort through. So out of this conversation with my friend, the Lord took me back to one part of the passage that I'd read two days ago for my blog post, Lie Detectors and Heart Conditioning. That was the name of the blog post. Um, it was 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, which goes as follows. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And when I read it the first time, I read that verse through the first time for the blog post. And I thought, oh, here's the list of things Paul says people do that are not pleasing to God, but people do them. And when I read it again last night during my conversation with my beautiful and compassionate friend, I thought about it. I said, this actually isn't a list of things Paul says people do. Rather, this is a list of things that Paul says people are. And voila, we're suddenly at a, you know, a major milestone in a conversation about identity. People are sexually immoral. People are idolaters. People are adulterers and male prostitutes and homosexual offenders and thieves and greedy and drunkards and swindlers, slanderers, slanderers and swindlers. Then Paul drops the motherload right on top of this proclamation of identity, right? And it seriously gave me chills when I realized this. And that is what some of you were, he says but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. So you in your identity were these things. You are now in your identity washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Yeah, that's awesome. Because you know what that means. I'm not my own. That's right. All those things that I cling to, that's a part of my identity. I am not my own. I was bought at a price. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. Paid for, redeemed, ransomed by the perfect blood of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. I am a child of God. That's awesome. And because of that identity, everything that I do inside this earthly fallen body of mine should reflect that identity. And I got to say, this really convicts me in the health department uh, and the things that I eat. But anyway, so this morning when I opened up to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and continued on, I found some more discussion of identity. Uh, the chapter on the surface, is it's a, a lengthy treatise on the subject of marriage, right? Um, apparently, the Corinthian church had, uh, had already been founded by Paul, right? Um, and they had at one point written to him asking him questions about all sorts of things, marriage, food sacrifice to idols, uh, spiritual gifts, etc. So given Paul's penchant for, you know, lots and lots and lots of words, <laughs> no wonder his letter back to the Corinthian church was just really long. So to summarize chapter seven, Paul lays out the present circumstances um, in which the Corinthian church finds themselves. And it's a hostile environment, basically, for those living a life um, that followed the teachings of Jesus. So given this environment, Paul writes that he believes it's better not to marry. Because of the present crisis, he says, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. Are you married? Do not seek a divorce. Are you unmarried? Do not look for a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But those who marry will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 26-28. So Paul's not saying that getting married is wrong, right? Because in several other places, he writes very strongly in favor of the state. 
but this gives us a context clue for what the Corinthian church was facing. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 17 to 24, Paul says, Nevertheless, each one should retain the place in life that the Lord assigned to him and to which God called him. This is the rule that I lay down in all the churches. Was a man already circumcised when he was called? He should not become uncircumcised. And physically, I don't know how that would be possible, but I think it was more the attitude that Paul's addressing here. Um, he goes on, was a man uncircumcised when he was called? He should not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. And given the heavy emphasis on circumcision in the Old Testament or in the Old Covenant before Christ's death and resurrection, that's a powerful statement coming from Paul. So Paul keeps going. He says, keeping God's command commands is what counts. Each one should retain the, the remain in the situation in which he was called when God called him. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you. Although if you can gain your freedom, do so. For he who was a slave when he was called by the Lord is the Lord's freedman. Similarly, he who was a freed man when he was called is Christ's slave. You are bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brothers, each man as responsible to God should remain in the situation God called him to. So look at that. Each one should remain in the situation when God called him. Our situation is not our identity. And I think that's where we get confused sometimes, right? Our identity when God calls us is this, washed, sanctified, justified, child of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. You are not your own. You are bought at a price, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. And that's what we cling to. So while we're bound here on this sin-riddled earth, we're going to hurt in our various situations. Some of those situations are really hard to accept, right? Cancer, childhood cancer, mental disorders, accidents, tragedy, on and on and on, which is why it's all the more important for us to remember these things are not who we are. We are not our mental disorder. We are not our accident. We are not our cancer or our heart problems or a terminal diagnosis, right? And, um, and Paul's list mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, we are not sexually immoral as an identity. We're not greedy as an identity. We're not idolaters as an identity or homosexual offenders as an identity. Not if we've accepted God's free gift of cleansing from our sins. We don't carry our sins or our circumstances with us into our identity. We don't make those things our identity because what is our identity? We're children of God. <laughs> That's who we are. And that's what I had for today. And I'll just let it go for now, and I will see you tomorrow.